Hello and welcome to this video. I've uh, spent the last hour-ish or so using my trusty uh, oscillating tool here. It just moves a little tiny bit, but the little blade uh, cut through all the gasket material pretty good. I removed, uh, what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, looks like five bolts on each side. And then six bolts here in the center. I took the little plate off that was uh, sealing it in there and uh, went to town with this guy I just put it in at an angle so I got the blade on there at an angle and just kind of pushed it through all the gasket material right while I was running uh, it took about an hour to do it I had to modify the blade it was uh, per it was bent in a couple places and I had to take it down to the uh, to the um, vise and beat on it with a hammer and <laughs> make it straight because it didn't have the depth that was hitting this first notch here and that wasn't deep enough to get into the to get down to the gasket material because it have to, has to go in pretty deep if you look here let's see so that's the blade right and you go all the way into there till you hit metal so you feel like that was well past i could only get in that far so i had to unbend it so i could get in all the way just barely does it but made quick work of it so, ready to take a look inside. I don't know how heavy this cover is. I have not opened it yet. Whew. Are you ready? Oh, that's not that bad. Okay, maybe it is. Uh, so there's the inside. Okay, I'm gonna put it down. <laughs> that was heavier than I thought it would be. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pause it, and then I'm gonna take the cover off. So, hold on. Okay, that was kinda heavy. Um, it, the cover's off. Uh, excuse the mess in the garage. <laughs> it's nice and shiny. It has not had any water in it or anything. doesn't look like it's had any water damage. I did a quick uh, look over of it so I can point out things. Um, yeah, so down in here we got that uh, main high voltage connector here. Looks like you have a bunch of bus bars using uh, four gauge cables, looks like, or whatever the metric equivalent is. Um, Notable components here, we've got a, a pretty large ceramic pre-charge resistor with a um, little relay underneath there to control it. And then this is the main high side contactor and low side contactor, I believe. And um, the interesting thing is I've been trying to figure out what this connector does because I haven't seen that in other people's packs. And it looks like I lucked out and I have a pack with a heater in it, with the heat um, the uh, heating parts, what do they call that? The heating elements. Because I'm thinking that's what's going on. Because if you look, say in the back here, I guess I should give a once around here. But this is the temperature sensor, this little black one here. And they're black wires because it's low voltage. You can see these are all the temperature sensor wires that get collected. They come over here. This is the uh, battery balancer and uh, can controller, everything's in there. The brains of the operation happen there. So everything goes back to it, but if you look, there's these orange wires, which are the high voltage, and they go to the heating element. And I think that these have heating elements in them. Because you've got them there, you've got them over here too, and then like these guys down in here, you can see have the uh, there's the temperature sensor there, and over here there's the temperature sensor. But on the other side, you can see the little high voltage lines coming over here. And so I think inside here there's a heating element that goes across both of them. Because you can see the little high voltage lines coming over there. And same on this side. See the little high voltage lines down there? coming across and before people freak out that I don't have gloves on or anything the main fuse is pulled so and everything's pretty covered I mean you can't even <laughs> get to the contactor right everything's pretty safe in here but uh, yeah yeah I was pretty happy with it here's the little current sensor right here in the middle it's a little hall effect style current sense. Got this big metal bar coming across there for 
structural rigidity. It looks like these guys are bolted in with a bazillion bolts down here. So that's pretty cool. So there should be, I haven't counted them, but there's 96 cells, but there's actually twice that many because these are, each module has four cells in it, and these are um, two parallel, two series. So these two guys are in parallel, and then they're in series with these two guys. So if you look in there, you can kind of see. So there's one, two, three, four cells. Might be easier to see that way. See one, two, three, and four. And so there ends up being, um, I can do some math here, 48 modules. And of those 48 modules, I'll be using 40 of them. It'll be 20 modules in series. And yeah, 20 modules in series. And then another 20 modules in series, and those will both be in parallel. That'll give me 150 volts. And then we'll be running my truck, which <laughs> is sitting out there right now. Um, oh yeah, for those that didn't know, I hit it. I actually, before, I, st I just stopped driving it in the winter because of the salt and the heater's not very good. But I hit a deer. <laughs> it, it shattered my, uh, my uh, I haven't fixed it yet. So I need to, uh, my whole grill, to get a new grill, it's all... It's all beat up, so it uh, doesn't didn't do too much damage, but it did uh, break a headlight, and the deer survived. It just like was dazed and stunned, and it just ran off like it didn't even happen. I was impressed, but uh, it was a pretty big deer. But uh, that's what you get for living in the Midwest. But anyways, I'm quite happy with this. Uh, it doesn't look like there's been any internal damage because this thing has been wrecked. Doesn't look like there's any internal damage. Oh, I can show you the. Uh, so I, was, I started at this corner here, so you can see I had a lot of I got a lot of the paint off and everything. Then I finally got a rhythm going, right? And I just I mean was able to take it and just cruise along. Cruise along about this fast or so. Just in there, and then I had, I got probably to about here, and then I stopped. And then I decided to come in from the other way. And the corners are the hardest to get started. And then once I got going that way, I somehow dug underneath here and then just started like really getting into the metal and met boogering that up. So I kind of screwed that up. But, but around the corners here, got, got into a rhythm. Once you get into a rhythm, you got the angle right, you just fly through it. It's not too bad. Like I said, the corners are the ones that are because the um, thing is really close here, where everywhere else it's up in the air a bit. But, so it didn't come out too bad. You can see where I stopped and started. Around these holes, Every all these are the mounting holes, or the um, where the top bolts in, and got a little trouble in some of those spots. But uh, overall, it wasn't too bad at all. I can go look at the other half for those that are interested. You can still see it's got a lot of, um, it's still got a lot of material on it. It's probably a quarter inch thick gasket material. But you can see what I'm talking about, like right here, how close that is. So it's really hard to get in there, underneath there to get to it. But you can kind of see. Gasket material. <laughs> if you stop watching the video right now, I won't, I won't care, but the inside's pretty clean. Uh, had a little um, dent here. There's a dent and there's a hole right there. But uh, I think there's a few dents around, but yeah, it's not too bad, I don't think. Oh, and this was the plate that I took off. It's a very nice machined plate, machined aluminum plate that went around. You can see um, it's a pressure plate, and it's used to, for this, there's this gasket that goes around there, so that holds the, that bolts on top of there to make a good seal, hermetically seal it. But yeah, I think it's going to work out well, really nice. The only thing I'm worried about is these things look a lot, um, like, taller than I expected, so I hope they can fit in my battery box. So I want to be able to fit them upright, so like the, all the battery terminals will be on the top, right? 
So they just all be stacked up. Because then I can reuse, I mean, I just run a couple bolts through it, four bolts. Because these stacks are only held in with these bolts, four bolts. Just a big threaded rod that runs the whole length. So, yeah, I'll see what happens. But um, definitely the first step is getting it open. And let me get you the big shot right here. Oh, this, is, this video has been going for about 10 minutes now. So I think that's a good place to stop. But uh, progress is being made. The next step is to um, open this guy up. Definitely want to see what's inside this uh, the balancer. And... Um, start uh, sniffing. Doesn't look like, I don't know how hard that's going to be to take apart. I hope it's not potted. But uh, if I can get inside there, it'd be nice to be able to bolt it back in without the cover so I can probe it. Yeah, that will be interesting. I have to see what happens. Anyways, uh, Thanks for watching.